Yeah. Uh, thanks, Professor um, E and Professor Sylvester, Professor Lee, and Professor Guan. It's my honor to, to have this presentation uh, to this workshop. Um, actually, I'm as a more uh, the uh, the composite research instead of I'm a, I'm a aircraft structure engineering designer. So I prefer to share my design experience with everyone to see if we are looking for uh, apply composite structure design in aircraft. So what we should do. Um, so today my uh, content include uh, uh, major four parts is talking started from airworthiness regulation for composite, then uh, quickly uh, through the multi scale analysis and the failure criteria and the influence factors for the laminated strengths and the design values of composite structures. So, um, when we're doing the uh, aircraft designs, um, the industry, the manufacturer always face airlines and the authority. So the manufacturer will uh, like to present a good selling property, uh, low weight economic productions, and the airline expi expected to buy a low price aircraft with a low operation cost and a low lower maintenance cost. But the authority is e uh, related to the, to the regulation and the certification, and they are more concerned uh, the safety and the damage tolerance. So all the different different requests from three parts are controversial issues. It's it's hard to say uh, make uh, agreement point. But from project point of view, they say we're dealing with time, cost, uh, quality, and safety. Um, the authority always focus on the safety, and the manufacturer is a, a more interesting for the cost. So as a designer we do need to keep our balance, right? So from the regulation point of view, it say um, for the larger transport aircraft, uh, the FAA have uh, the 14 code of a federal regulation with part 25 and the YASA is same, the certification specification 25. The detailed chapters are same. Um, they, are, they have 303 is for the factor of safeties which is dealing with ultimate load relationship with the ultimate load. And 305 is strength uh, and the deformation. Uh, 307 is say proof of structure. And 603 is material. And 605 is fabrication method. 607 is fasteners. 613 is material strength a property and the material design volume and the 619 is um, special factors dealing with like development or others and then is 651 is a proof of strength for composites it's more complicated um, and the authority issued to say for FAA have AC 20-107 and YASA is similarly is means of compliance, approved means compliance 20-29. Um, why? Um, the authority will have a special uh, issue the regulations uh, because uh, composites have anti uh behavior and uh, there's more effect from the manufacture assembly process and the, the design value include more uncertainties. Uh, Design details also is the different with the metallic structure. Uh, for critical and the primary structure, they are facing the bonding delamination problem. And uh, uh, for the intrinsic uh, flaws, it's have a no gross design principle. And for the discrete flaw, it must be approved, the slow gro uh, damage growth. Then also concerning with the protections, inspections, and development effects. So all this, uh, the special regulation for composites is travel to cover the differences between the composites and the metallic, right? So then we're talking about the multi-scale uh, analysis and the failure criteria. So what is a composite? Composite, uh, say, is, is carbon fiber reinforced uh, uh, polymer. So simply say is, is carbon fibers 
uh, plus resin and to generate uh, lamina. Then with the combination of different stack sequence, we got uh, the laminate, right? So there's a three key elements in between the fiber, resin, and the interface between the between the fiber and the resin, right? So we uh, people uh, say transfer the isotropic uh, classical series to and isotropic uh, laminas use uh, classical lamina series, right? So to analyze the isotropic uh, material behavior. So uh, in order to analyze the failure criteria, so we need to handle uh, the damages initiated from the weak element, which is reason and the interface, right? So the most laminated plates are failed progress of failure. Uh, with a non-linear behavior, which is has discussed with between the professor uh, Sylvester and the professor Lee, right? So how we handle that non-linear performance, uh, which is significantly different with metallic metallic structure. So if we're looking for um, different uh, uh, combination of like uh, the different thickness of uh, pliers. Uh, in the tension failure, then their performance definitely is demonstrated as nonlinear behavior, uh, because the microstructure, whatever in tension, in compression, or in compression shear, was initiated from the matrix or the interface between the reason and the fiber, right? So, a typical example is if we apply a ninety degree and the zero degrees. Um, specimen, the laminate uh, in tension. So with the increase of the deformation, then more and more matrix cracking initiated, uh, which leading to the modulus will be decreased, right? So this uh, is exactly what the progress of failure composite must face. In that case, say in order to use the traditional classic uh, theory, theory uh, mechanics, to apply this behaviors. A lot of effort was done in the academic area to cover the analysis. Today we have talked from micro uh, scales, uh, massive scales to macro scales. And uh, the most popular failure criteria is in three types. So the, the first one is non-interactive failure criteria, which has come from the traditional uh, metallic structure analysis, like a maximum stress, maximum strain, right? Then uh, starting with the composite structure with the global interactive failure criteria with like a Tai here and the Tai Wu or Hoffman or yamada san And the third one is the failure mode related or physical based criteria, which is dealing with Hashing, Chang Chang, Pork, uh, Kanzan safe and uh, Lux series. Uh, in order to qualify or compare uh, which failure criteria as uh, more efficiently or effectively, so there's three different world exercise failure criteria was uh, conducted starting from more than 10 years ago. Uh, Professor Pino and uh, Professor Lee was deep involved in such an exercise. But, uh, from engineering point of view, is how we can, we should consider to use them to do the analysis for the aircraft structure design, right? So the top level for the strength requirement from airworthiness, um, the chapter 305 is say, we need to demonstrate the structure uh, and ultimate load must be not failure at at least three minutes, which means uh, in the design, we must capture the maximum failure strength, right? So we need to cope with the nonlinear behavior uh, in the failure progress, and also we need to capture the maximum failure strength. So from this point of view, uh, whatever we're dealing with the face first apply failure or the last apply failure, is what we want to do to capture is in between those. Is, is not exactly say first of uh, ply failure or last of ply failure. So that's the challenge in, for the designer, right? So 
What exactly, once we do the composite structure design for aircraft, we must use the fatigue, uh, the, the, the composite failure criteria to capture the damage initiation and accounting the progress failure. So in particular case, uh, the delamination is a, is a big event. For example, in the uh, right hand, uh, if we have a panel suffer the impact, then def definitely there's a lot of the uh, ply delaminations existing. So when we do the um, compressive analysis after impact, definitely we must handle the uh, ply de delamination properly, right? And then the maximum failure strength of the composite is directly linked to the material property uh, and the loader type, the loader path, and the structure features, and the manufacture assembly process. Um, obviously, from design point of view, if we don't account the failure uh, progress with the failure mode, it's hard to manage the design. Right? So that's actually what exactly we uh, should use. The failure criteria in the design is we must capture the damage elimination and the delamination. Right. Then we go to the, the next part for the influence factors for the laminated plates. Uh, laminated plates. Right. So there's a lot of manifest defects. Uh, existing in the composite structure, which is significantly more than the uh, metallic structures. And that if we try to use the classical metallic structure design philosophy to composites, sometimes it's really struggling. Um, and uh, one of the most popular defects in the composite is the void or the prosity. So the research demonstrate when the a percentage of the void, uh, the void in the laminate is increased, the strength can be reduced significantly. So as from quality control point of view, we must control the volume of the void or prosity in the laminate, but that is is um, is, is beyond the, the failure criteria can be handled. So we must deal with manufacturing processing. Right, so um, in the material processing, so we have void, we have the micro crack, we have rich resin, uh, rich resin, we have a gap um, overlap, we have a winkle, we have corner defect, we have ply drop, we have weaveness, we even we have the um, fiber weaveness defect uh, on the uh, laminar layer or the tall uh, pokings. Where all those composite material defects are linked directly linked to the material processing, right? Uh, so that's uh, in further will continue to link to the structure features, the toolings, and the other manufacturing process. So if we only focus on, let's say, the material behavior itself, it will not solve the problem for the design. And in further, the ply thickness of the laminate uh, is a strongly affected the laminate plot. So one side, when we reduce the ply thickness, um, the strength can be improved, which called uh, into strength, right? And uh, but uh, when the ply thickness reduced due to uh, the the pliers and the more uniform on the microstructure, uh, in fact. Uh, the most uh, strength behavior increase, but uh, the interlaminar fracture toughness will be reduced. So how we keep a balance and how we uh, say consider to meet the design requirement and to min minimize the manufacture times. So we need carefully to select the ply thickness uh, we design in the structures, right? Then, Extending to the structure uh, complexity, we're dealing with open hole. So for open hole, uh, compared with the failure uh, criteria, we are talking some uh, more more in the uh, failure mode in the laminate. The open hole is more complicated. We have a, like a, in the tension failure, we have a fiber broken, we have delamination, uh, which is um, observed by 
a professor in Bristol University, uh, Mac Rosenham, and uh, Steve Hallett in um, 10 more years ago, right? They also uh, found that the fiber broken and the delamination, if you can uh, handle those two failure mechanism, they got confidence, say we can predict the open hole failure very, uh, very well. But for compression failure, that is more complex. It's dealing with fiber broken, mesh cracking, fiber and the meshes failure, plus delamination. Uh, as a recently, uh, say, literature review made by Professor uh, P.P. Camenu in Portuguese, it's demonstrated it's even complicated because for the open hole failure, the, the influence factor can be included like a ply thickness, stucking sequence, thickness of plate, the width of plate, the hole diameter, uh, various of the parameters, and the, the hole drilling process. So with, with my point of view, currently like uh, the machining processing was still say a little bit of say gray area, which not so strongly uh, researched, uh, studied by the academic study. So although the drilling process say observed a long time ago and even have some uh, consideration uh, in the precise design to looking for the age damage of the open hole area, but in fact, uh, say, uh, the exactly dealing with the failure criteria or failure mode for the open hole failure is still not captured very well. So if we're looking for the drilling processing, there's a three different type of damages uh, if the laminate is thick enough. So on the top, when the, the drilling, the drill, uh, drill down, it's, there's a peel up delamination the area, then is coming with the wear the area, then the bottom will be pu push out the delamination. But those, the size of these three different types of damage area can be strongly affected by the laminate thickness. So this is why if we uh, looking back, the, dam the damages, right, for very single uh, laminate ply, it's, it's the failure uh, mode clearly show is the lamination, right? But for very thick uh, plates, it's uh, dominated by fiber pull out uh, plus the delamination. So this is why actually is strongly linked to the open hole machining damages, right? And this is why I actually 10 more years ago, I, I, I made a, a cooperation with University of Bristol and tried to uh, conduct a virtual test to predict uh, uh, the various uh, open hole tension failure. The, the accuracy is roughly about 70%, and the rest of 30% is cannot be captured properly. Except that, if we consider the manufacturing processing, the wearing of tools is, will cause more difference uh, on the Whole machining, because if we use the whole drill, the same drill to different holes, then you can see the damage um, content, the degrees will be different, right? When the drill is very sharp, the quality of the hole is is good, so which means damage is less. But the end of the drill, then we got a lot of damage on the open hole. So this is we haven't considered properly and is a challenge in the, for the designer. And then come to the board joint. It's a more complicated because the load conditions is we're leading to the different failure mode on the fasteners. So even for laminate itself, we need to consider like a bearing, a neck tension, shear out, uh, cleavage, pull out, and the uh, bolts failure itself. So if we are not able to predict that, definitely you cannot predict a good boat joint. So I, it's, it's my honest to say, working with Professor Pino 10 more years ago uh, on a project to, to improve the uh, fatigue behavior of composite joint. And the Professor Pino was developed a 
first, uh, I believe, is the first uh, 3D uh, parametric study model for the gold joint, which uh, can be captured the clamping force, the assembly relationship, uh, and the friction force between the joint and the geometry of the fasteners. Uh, so with the published paper by uh, Sylvester, you can see in the different loading stage, the behavior between the fasteners and the plates are different. So if we think about the use like uh, the classical 2D concept for the composite hole failure, it will not proper capture the failure progress. But it seems is for the aircraft structure design uh, from the, the global model, like Professor uh, Pino talked, what is the most important is the stiffness. So this is why you see on the bottom in Airbus, it will be uh, in, the, in, the, in the static test of the tension joint, it's always have a load relays to capture the stiffness at the limit load to, for the proper modeling purpose, right? So based on this, what talked, the company structure failure, there's a much more influence factors and uncertainties than the metallic structure. So from this point of view, how, what we should handle the designs? So then we talk the last parts is the design values for the composite structure. So there uh, is a building block approach um, established through uh, aircraft structure integrated program um, uh, since uh, last century, 1950s. Uh, then gradually in 1990s, um, it's a concept called the test parameter was proposed by French people, could John uh, J. Roche, right? And uh, with the latest uh, regulation, it's uh, strongly linked to the regulation requirement. The, the bot bottom of the test parameter is linked to the material selections, uh, processing approval, and also uh, the design of, of available, uh, allowable development. Then the middle level was dealing with validation and the verification of design configuration and method and the tools. And the, the top one was the full scale test to validate the design can meet the uh, AOSNIS requirements, right? But from material point of view, which is strongly concerned with the failure criteria, you say, what we should do? It's actually the regulation uh, 617 is required. The material strength property must be based on enough test and uh, to meeting approved the specification to establish the design value on a statistical basis, right? Then it's also required to say for different uh, structure, we have A value and B value, which is have a 99% uh, probability not to fail and 90% not to fail, right? So this figures illustrates how we can say generate the design values with static data. Uh, the key issue is for A value and B value, uh, the minimum test numbers for A value is to generate A value is we need a nine, almost a 300 test to accumulate enough statistical data to generate the one specified material, right? For B value at the least we need 28. So with this point of view, if we do, uh, the test on the laminated plates, it will be a huge challenge and almost impossible. So this is why actually, uh, like Airbus, it's what are they doing? They doing the basic material design values for laminar level. Then to apply the failure material and the classical lamination theory to cover the laminate, even from this point of view, it's still so it's a challenge for industry because it costs too much. As, I, as I'm talking at the beginning, we need to keep a balance between the safety and cost. So actually, 
there's a four different resource to can collect those tests from like a material uh, qualification test from element details from the traveling traveler specimen and also from method development research right with all this combination then we use the statistical treatment plus engineering judgment we can these develop the design allowance which can meet the aerosmith requirement. Then with the iteration, with accumulation, we can do uh, more accurate composite structure design. And uh, for whatever we use the design in um, say empirical analytical method or FE, then we need to uh, do the iteration and imply the failure criteria to uh, iterate the design values and the let's do uh, precisely calculations. Right. So uh, if we focus on the bottom, uh, the, the bolted joint, which like uh, in A350 is still then uh, have more than 55,000 uh, fasteners. Right. So in order to a proper accurate design, what do we need to do uh, is on the four different level. For the first is what are talking enough tests to cover the laminar property, right? Uh, so we need to produce the laminar property, which is strongly linked to the material system and its process. Then we can use those data uh, to cover the laminated property uh, used the, considering the stacking sequence, the classical uh, lamination series and the failure criteria and the loading conditions, right? Then for the open holes, uh, above, we need a more link to the machining process. And for the boat joint, we need even more to dealing with the design features and assembly process. So in that case, um, if we do this job step by step properly, which means we can do a more accurate structure design, right? So come to the conclusion, actually it's simple. They say um, uh, with the currently capability, to in the aircraft structure structure design, so doing to obtain the composite material property at the laminar level is the most efficient way, and that should be strongly linked to the material itself specification and the material process, right? So um, some people around around the uh, industry say, we can share the composite laminate property. And actually, if you ignore the material process, and actually that's kind of shared data, it's meaningless. And it's totally against the AOSNIS regulation, right? So once we got an accurate enough laminar property, uh, then we can use the failure criteria uh, plus classical lamination theory as a baseline to, to do the comp good composite structure design for the lamination structure. And uh, in order to produce reliable aircraft with the composite components, so we must uh, establish the proper test validation, uh, test pyramid uh, from the bottom level of the material to the machining, to the assembly, and even include the in-service condition, right? Uh, plus the design method, tools, validations. So this is uh, why actually people around the world is work harder to together for like uh, A350 and uh, a Boeing 787 manufacturers. Um, so with my experience, they say using building block approach to establish various test parameters to conduct a means of complex work for aircraft certification is the most reliable 
and it cannot meet the pass uh, to meet the airworthiness requirement, which can be simplified with one sentence, is analysis supported by test. Thank you very much.